So this is one of the biggest problems we have, soft markers, because they are soft markers. They don't give definitive information, but it is going to report abnormalities in the brain, the kidney, the heart, and so on. So the parents are not understanding this concept that what we are looking for is just an additional marker which indicates that the baby could be at risk. It's not that the baby has the condition, but could be at risk of certain problems like trisomy. So soft markers are basically ultrasound findings which have been noted over the last few years, uh, like 20, 30 years, that there is an association of some of these soft markers. The reason it's an association is because it doesn't happen in all the pregnancies with this soft marker. Majority are still normal, but compared to the general population who don't have this soft marker, the pregnancy with the soft marker has a higher chance. So which particular pregnancy has a higher chance is what we need to look at. So soft markers, I'll just explain a little bit about each soft marker and uh, hopefully we'll have some images added as well. So we have single umbilical artery, which is the most commonly discussed. Uh, single umbilical artery means we have the umbilical cord with three vessels in it normally. So one of the veins disappears. That's why we have only one vein left and we have two arteries. In some pregnancies, there is only one artery left. That's a variation. And uh, there may be some impact on the fetus in terms of uh, higher resistance to the blood coming back from the fetus. Growth restriction may be more. But apart from that, there is an observation that there is uh, this single umbilical artery is more common in trisomies. But very rare that the trisomies would have just this single umbilical artery as a finding. You would have either the uh, screening tests abnormal or you would have other abnormalities on the scan like uh, a heart, is, a heart defect is picked up or there is a facial abnormality picked up on the scan. So you might have corroborating findings in the scan which point to the trisomy. So if it's an isolated single umbilical artery with a normal pregnancy screening test, either the first trimester or the second trimester, you either can continue the pregnancy as it is and monitor the fetal growth, or you can opt for an NAPT if you want to be reassured. But in majority of the situations, NAPT will come back normal. So if cost is a significant concern, you can stick with that decision. So don't be alarmed about it. The other soft marker that's commonly discussed is something called the choroid plexus cyst. So this becomes a scary situation for parents because it's something that's reported as in the fetal brain. We have a fluid-filled space in the brain called the ventricles, and uh, the ventricles uh, produce a fluid called CSF at their base. The part which produces the CSF is called the choroid plexus. So cerebrospinal fluid is a fluid that circulates in that chamber as well as in the spinal canal. So this fluid producing part is called the choroid plexus. It's more vascular, more blood vessels in it. But in uh, real terms, uh, we have uh, the choroid plexus breaking down in some areas. And this is called a choroid plexus cyst. It may be on both sides or it may be on one side. It may be small, it may be large. In general terms, a choroid plexus doesn't have function. It's in the brain, but it's not part of the brain. It's only a vessel, blood vessel part, which has a role in secreting fluid. If there is some uh, defects in it, it doesn't affect its function. The fluid is still produced normally and it has nothing to do with brain function. So if the overall imaging of the baby is normal, the presence of the choroid plexus cyst uh, should be a marker that there may be higher risk of trisomies like Edward syndrome or trisomy 18. But again, it's a marker. Majority of the babies with choroid plexus cyst are still normal. If it's a very large cyst, you may consider doing an NIPT again to rule out uh, Edwards. And you do have the first trimester screening report to support you. If it's normal and the other scans are normal, you can choose if you want to be sure to do the NIPT. But after the baby is born, these cysts usually disappear by themselves. There is no need to repeat the scan after birth and the baby develops normally. So this doesn't impact the development. Another uh, soft marker associated to the brain is the ventriculomegaly, where the same fluid filled space I described becomes a little bigger. There are ranges according to the maturity of the gestation. Again, it's a soft marker. There may also be a risk of hydrocephalus if the head size is bigger or this fluid filled chamber grows with time. So you have to decide what to do at that stage and continue to monitor the scans. Very rare to terminate pregnancies based on this alone because you would have the ability to treat the babies with a shunt. So Picking up antenatally helps you to treat them. But again, if it is just ventriculomegaly without enlargement of the head and the size doesn't progress, if the rest of the screening is normal, you don't need to worry about it. With any soft marker, you can be offered an IPT to be reassuring. Then we have the echogenic intracardiac focus, hyperechogenic focus in the heart. 
uh, this appears as a bright area when you do the fetal scan for the heart. And this bright scan is nothing but a hyperechoic part of the fetal uh, developing heart muscle, papillary muscle to be specific. And in many pregnancies, this doesn't progress to uh, any heart condition. So if you see that a hyperechogenic focus, it's better to do a fetal echo to make sure the heart looks normal because there may be other problems which mimic the bright echo. So if it is uh, ruling out heart problems, the rest of the screening was normal. Again, you need, don't need to worry. And once you have done the fetal echo, there is no need to do an echo for the baby after the baby is born. You can just monitor the baby. So uh, hyperechogenic bowel is the other condition where the gut, the GI tract looks bright. So the brightness is uh, depending on how much gain settings you keep on the machine. So the sonographer should be experienced enough to adjust the gain so it's not reported false as a brightness when it's actually due to your settings. The hyperechogenic brightness in the bowel is usually due to swallowed fetal blood. During the early pregnancy, uh, there may be some blood spotting into the yolk sac and the baby can swallow it. And this appears as bright specks because blood is bright. Uh, but of course, you may have associated conditions like cystic fibrosis, intrauterine infections, IUGR growth restriction by itself can cause the stool to be impacted and causes a bright speck. In these cases, the approach is the same. You do the first trimester screening, you do the anomaly scans. If the rest of it is normal, you can consider NIPT. If there are specific signs that point to growth restriction, you can look for intrauterine infections. But if the baby is growing well, you continue to monitor the scan. If there is a gut obstruction, the bowel will start dilating. Here also, you don't need to terminate the pregnancy because even if there is a bowel obstruction, most of these are amenable to surgical treatment. So only thing you should refer to a center which has the ability to do uh, neonatal surgery. If the scan shows widening of the gut, the gut becomes big, the ecogenicity suggests. So this is a small percentage of the fetuses. Most of the fetuses with ecogenic bowel will be normal. Now, the short femur is a growth concern. Often it's looked at as a soft marker as well. Same with the renal pelviectasis. So we have the kidney pelvis, the renal pelvis. It may appear enlarged in some pregnancies. Uh, there is something called hydronephrosis, fetal hydronephrosis, where in addition to the pelvis becoming big, there is also evidence of increased pressure in the system. The smaller parts called calluses also become dilated. The ureter, the tube may be dilated as well. And this can reflect some form of obstruction to the urinary flow. But just the pelvis becoming dilated can be considered as a soft marker. And again, the approach depends on the size. You may choose to just monitor this if the rest of the screening is normal, or you may do an NAPT as well. So we have uh, these major things that we discussed. So hyperechogenic bowel, pelviectasis, uh, ventriculomegaly, choroid plexus, single umbilical artery. These are all soft markers. And often we get many messages from parents that uh, mention that the doctor has advised to terminate a pregnancy based on this. That's absolutely wrong. And you don't need to do invasive testing directly. Now we have the NIPT. If a soft marker is there, if the rest is normal, but you're still worried, go ahead with an NIPT, which is a, a non-invasive test on the mother's sample. Though there is a cost involved, it will at least reassure you. And once you make a decision on what to do, don't keep thinking about it. Very unlikely that this soft marker will affect your baby's progress. So just be reassured and monitor and enjoy the pregnancy because the maternal health status will be important for the baby's health as well. If your mother is anxious, there is a higher chance of preterm delivery. And many times we don't need to do anything more.